Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dirk. Uh, want to say a shout out to the Mixtape Theology family. Thanks for having me. You guys don't know who I am, but uh, I did connect with Rachel from Mixtape Theology and she had seen a post that I put up on Instagram of a t-shirt that I made about 30 years ago. <laughs> and it's this t-shirt right here, the iconic DC Talk Since 1987 t-shirt. Some of you guys may have picked that up, might recognize that t-shirt. Uh, she asked me to make a quick little video uh, to tell the backstory of that, and I'd be happy to do that for you. I was actually in seminary uh, in the early 90s when DC Talk was finishing up the New School Jam tour with Heather and Kirsten and um, the Dynamic Twins, and they came to our seminary, and I wanted to meet, actually I wanted to meet the Dynamic Twins and talk to them about my artwork. So I went down to the gymnasium where the show was going to be, and I walked in uh, midday, and I'm in the gym by myself. There's nobody in there, just a ragtag stage, and I'm standing there looking around like a dummy, and, <laughs> and all of a sudden through the doors, this dude in a hoodie walks in, shuffling, carrying a cup of coffee, and he takes the hood off, and it's Toby Mac. And... Toby and I got to talking, and I gave him my phone number. I didn't think any of it. I mean, I didn't think DC Talk was going to be calling me back. But sure enough, about a week later, Toby left a voicemail on my machine. I was freaking out, and um, we started a relationship at that point, and I continued to keep in touch with him over the course of the next year. And at some point, he invited me to come down to Nashville and stay at his house with him and Amanda. And I came down, and, and I remember very clearly being up all night because I had to be at work in Chicago the next day by one o'clock and I spent all night doodling this picture um, uh, based upon some of my ideas and some of Toby's ideas and he just wanted to keep it real simple but have this iconic sort of uh, brand on there. I think I did a couple other t-shirts as well for them and, and out of Eden but um, that's the one that uh, people remember. Uh, I just actually found that at my parents' house about two weeks ago, digging through my dad's old drawer. And so I brought it back with me as a keepsake, and it brings back a lot of fun memories. Uh, the cool thing about that t-shirt, very quickly I'll tell you, is that um, in going down to Nashville, I fell in love with Nashville, and I decided with my wife that I would go, uh, that we would move there, actually. And I called Toby, and I said, is there anything you got going on that I could participate with you guys? And he had just started up Goatee Records. They said, well, Grits needs a manager. And so we moved down to Nashville, and I managed Grits uh, for about four years. If you remember, um, Tehran Bonafide and Coffee, who used to dance for DC Talk during the New Thang tour and the Free at Last tour, started a hip-hop group called Grits, and they need a manager, and I worked with those guys for four years. We have lifelong friend friendships that, that go on to this day. I just talked to those guys the other day. Um, we... We have crazy love for each other, and um, that experience was amazing. Also, very quickly, what came out of that experience was during the Free at Last photo shoot, um, Toby was wearing a, a wooden cross necklace in one of the photo shoots he did. And uh, I said, you know, man, if, if, you, um, if you ever needed any more of those crosses, like for tour, my father is a, a shop teacher. He teaches shop at the junior high school, and um, he'd probably be happy to make some for you. So my dad, I think who was actually newly retired at that point, Toby said, oh, absolutely, sure, you know, have him send us some. So my dad handmade about 100 rosewood crosses for DC Talk, and he sent them down there, and he was so happy to do that. It gave him something to do in his retirement, and Toby immediately sold out of those things. So my dad made another 100 of them, sold them out again, and um, the cool thing from that experience is that my dad loved the simplicity of the, of the symbol of the cross. And my dad was really a man of very few words, um, but he liked to let his actions speak uh, for him and expressing his faith and, and also using the talents that God has given him. And he was a wonderful woodworker. So he made these little crosses right here and he put we would put a packet in or this little note that says an outward sign of an inward commitment and um that that simplicity really summed up my father well i lost my father this may um and uh was blessed to have a long life with him but from those couple hundred crosses that he made from dc for dc talk about 25 years ago my dad continued to make 
crosses that he sent out all over the world. And uh, he made about 40,000 of those, including one that ended up in uh, being blessed by the Pope, of all things. So that was um, a legacy that was very impactful uh, to a lot of people all over the world. And it all started with a few crosses that my dad made for Toby and the guys from DC Talk. And that's a real, real special story for me. So just wanted to share that with you. Thanks for having me, you guys. Um, big ups to Jesus Freak. I remember being down there when they were making that and um, hearing the tracks for it. What an incredible, game-changing record for the Christian music industry and uh, just a record that is endured to this day. Love it. Love the guys from DC Talk. Thanks for having me. You guys take care.